649. This is your morning in eight minutes. Right now, two people are hurt and two are dead after a crash in Knoxville on Chapman Highway. THP says the driver that caused the crash led Blunt County officers on a chase Tuesday. According to a preliminary report by THP, Tyler Smelcher was trying to evade police traveling north in the southbound lanes of Chapman Highway. Police say Smelcher swerved and hit a Toyota RAV4 at East Hendron Chapel Road. THP says Smelcher then hit a KUB utility pole. Smelter and his passenger, Ashley Warren, were both thrown from the vehicle as the car split in half. Two other people are hurt from this crash. Right now, we're working to find out their conditions and what led to the chase. A state lawmaker is pushing a bill in hopes to improve math scores in public schools. It would require students K through 8 to go to summer school or get a tutor if they score poorly on the TCAP. Representative Scott Kepke says the proposal would not hold students back, which is different from the third grade retention law that went into effect this year for students who score poorly on the reading portion of the TCAP. If you can't read and do math on grade level, how are you going to be successful in this world? In any field you want to pick. I think that standardized testing can really take the joy out of learning and both for teachers and students and parents. And I think it brings unnecessary stress to the joy of learning. Well, right now, police all over Kentucky are looking for 34 year old Dustin Newsom. He is wanted for human trafficking, child pornography, and a handful of other charges. He's wanted out of Pikeville, Kentucky, just over an hour and a half from Kingsport. If you see him, call police. A Tennessee school counselor is in custody facing several child sex charges. The TBI is now leading an investigation. Police say Daniel Gregory out of Rutherford County sent sexually explicit photos of himself, his wife and 11 children. Investigators say they tracked the photos back to the counselor and arrested him this week. Rutherford County Schools says Gregory resigned from his position. He's due in court next month on 11 counts of aggravated sexual exploitation of a minor. Well, it's unclear when the House of Representatives will have a speaker again. And with a key ally at war, the situation on Capitol Hill has taken on new urgency. Republicans nominated Louisiana Congressman Steve Scalise to be the next speaker. Scalise needs 217 votes to become speaker, and some Republicans say they won't support him. Congress needs to pass a spending plan to avoid a government shutdown, which is a little more than five weeks away. Without funding, the House cannot approve anything to address inflation, help Ukraine or Israel. Nearly 9,000 United Auto Workers at a Ford truck plant in Kentucky have now joined the nationwide strike. It's the largest targeted strike against Ford, General Motors and Stellantis as the union works to negotiate a new contract with the big three automakers. The plant is in Louisville. UAW President Sean Fain officially called for the strike last night after negotiations with Ford reached a stalemate. In a statement, Ford called the move irresponsible. Once again, the expanded strike does not include GM's largest plant in the U.S. in Spring Hill, Tennessee, as UAW avoids targeting plants that make the best-selling cars on the market. The Spring Hill UAW chapter says it is waiting for the call to strike and will be ready. One of Knoxville's favorite Halloween traditions, Boo at the Zoo, officially opens to the public today. Boo at the Zoo features several nights of not too scary Halloween fun. It's perfect for preschool and elementary aged kids. There's going to be trick or treating, even a monster mash dance party, special character nights and other activities. The fun officially kicks off today. It runs through Sunday, then continues the 19th through the 22nd and Halloween weekend. It's 530 to 8 o'clock each night. Tickets are just 15 bucks and children two and under are free. Don't forget to join us live on Friday. Ted Hall, Brittany Tarwater and myself. We're going to be right here on WVLT previewing Boo at the Zoo. We're going to be live from Zoo Knoxville from noon to 6. So make sure you're here this Thursday night, 7 p.m. Market Square Madness. Go Balls and Lady Balls. <laughs>
Oh yeah, Market Square Madness returns to downtown Knoxville tonight. UT Athletics posted this hype video featuring Sterling the Pearl, along with both the men's and women's basketball teams, both the spirit teams and the band will be there to perform. It's free to go. The event kicks off at 7 o'clock, but you might want to get there a little early to find some parking downtown. We do want to get a check of your first alert traffic. You're taking a live look at I-40 at Watt Road, where we still have that disabled vehicle off in the right-hand shoulder of the interstate. Not blocking any lanes. Looks like it's about to clear out soon. So you're in good shape as you head out the door. Still pretty quiet out there on the roads through West Knox. I-40, Pellissippi Parkway, Kingston Pike all looking good. Taking a live look at I-75 right around Merchant Drive. No congestion just yet. The morning rush still around the corner. It's been quiet all week long with so many of you out on fall break. So should have no issues this morning. But of course, we're going to keep an eye on it for you in the CW Knoxville. Your first alert forecast with meteorologist Paige Noel. Well, we had those clouds all day yesterday. We're going to continue to see those at least this morning, but you can see they're starting to break apart and clear out. Kept some temperatures a little bit warmer. Maryville at 58. Knoxville also at 58 this morning. Oak Ridge has dropped to 55. Pigeon Forge 57. Washburn, you're at 55 degrees. That backyard forecast a little bit later this afternoon. We're going to see a whole lot more sunshine. 70 by noon, 80 by 4 o'clock, 73 degrees by 7 o'clock. Plenty of sunshine. That sunset a little bit closer to about 7 o'clock now. We are tracking that rain to move in with that cold front later Friday mainly heading into Saturday could start to see a few sprinkles Friday and we've got a few showers actually sticking around heading into Sunday. So that all of all forecast presented by Food City. If you're headed to the game by the time the game kicks off around 330, that's when we'll hit our high of 73 69 at halftime. By the time you're leaving the game, you're seeing that mixture of sun and clouds winds from the northwest gusting up to about 30 miles per hour. That's going to be on that cooler side. Just kind of keep that in mind. Could be tracking some showers for tailgating and for kickoff, but we should start to dry out lower 60s Sunday, upper 50s for those highs early next week. So getting much cooler after the front, hanging on to some clouds and showers. We'll start to warm back up slowly Wednesday to Thursday. Start to see more of that sunshine. But look at those temperatures near 40 degrees Wednesday morning. Definitely going to be a chilly one. So try to get out and enjoy that beautiful weather we got today. Paige, thanks. You want to keep the WVLT weather yes. handy for Saturday. We're headed over to the CW Knoxville. Please join us.